Oh, on the gear tag. I forgot that that's. Do you not get zoom? Yeah. Did you become a famous YouTuber? Obviously. How'd you know? Because you're making a YouTube video. You caught me. Optic Josh. I already have one from last Phase, year. Phase Josh. Phase Josh. All right, howdy everyone. I just wanted to make a quick introduction for you to better understand who I am and what the heck I'm doing. So. I'm a wildlife technician. I bounce around state to state. I work on various different projects, mainly ungulate capture. So I put GPS collars on animals. I take biological samples. We'll get into that in the video. You know, you'll, you'll see a lot of those practices being in play. But uh, this is all done by wildlife professionals. I mean, we are trained. We all have degrees and we all have animal capture experience, whether that be um, small animal um, or, you know, large ungulate species like deer. So I, uh, I've been doing this now for quite a few years and uh, just wanted to kind of share what a day in the life of a wildlife technician. Anyway, so I just wanted to go, I just wanted to explain that before we got started here and hope you enjoy the video. He got this here. One side. Got that driver. Tighten it down. No parasites. He's getting the nasal swab. Bio punch. Putting it in there right here. It's 
so I nicked a little much there, but you got the blue coat. It's in the backpack. It'll be fine once I get the all wound coat up after I get it. There's a vein there. I hit the vein. All right, so made it out here to Illinois, got the dart gun set up, got the ranges uh, 10, 15, 20, so pretty dialed in here for those ranges and should be a good time. We're gonna get stuff started on Tuesday cause season ends on Monday, so we can't do anything until Tuesday, but we've been getting the gun side in. We'll go pick up a bunch of pallet of corn and start going at it. All right, so. We got the first clover up, nice and taunt now. Got the cell cam, the reveal up on it. Corn out. How many do you think we're going to catch out of this one? All of them. All yeah. of them, perfect. Yes. I like that answer. So we're going to leave this open for a couple days and then, then get it triggered here probably in the next three days or so as long as deer are going in it and feeling comfortable. So. Cross the fingers. Hope we catch him. Good job, boys. <laughs> All right. Got another clover out. Heck yeah. First deer. We got one in the clover out here. We're going to go. I'm going to go in and we're going to get her down. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty sure it's a yearling doe. So at least we're hoping anyway. If it's a if it's a button, we're gonna cut the. I'm gonna cut the trap down, so fold it in on it. But looks like a yearling doe. I guess we'll find out when we get there. So just waiting on one more person to show up, and then we're gonna pitter patter, get at her. Excited? Oh yeah! It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good. One. First deer of the season. I didn't get the first workup on video, but here's her running off, all safe with her brand new collar. second doe couldn't get a vit in her she's only a two year all right old. so i'm going to pause this video here real quick i just want to explain what a vit is so it's a vaginal implant transmitter so basically what it does is it gives out a very high frequency a vhf and transmits back to us so we're able to find uh where that where that doe gave birth and we're able to find the fawn more than likely as long as we get to it fast enough so that's why we put the vits in them. It helps us find the fawns and gather biological samples from a doe that we've already captured and her fawn as well. So we also put fawn collars on the fawns themselves. This is to give us a better understanding. If the fawn dies, we can go out and see the mortality and do an investigation. I not had a fawn yet, so you guys having fun? Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, there she's twitching her tail. She's yeah, gonna be up in a second. Yeah. 
So you can see her moving her head around and everything like that. That's pretty normal reaction. Every deer is different. They all react different, but you can basically see that the drug is starting to take effect and she's starting to wake up and reverse from her little nap. Jeremy, you need to go to the thrift store and get a camo jacket. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy. I guess I do. What is this? You're not real deer crew. We ain't even on a deer crew. No, we're not. <laughs> so this is our dart set up here. Um, this is where I go to fill up the darts. Um, we, we're using BAM. So we use one and a half to two cc's of BAM, depending on if it's a doe or a buck. And uh, we use the three cc um, new darts. And we have to use the three inch needles in order to get into the mechanism that uh, to load the darts. So this is a three cc dart. We'll fill up. It comes with this this one, which works. But I always found that the three inchers always end up working better than than the one they send with the kit. We also have a separate drug log since this is a scheduled drug. They also confirm with the other texts. It's so right now we're gonna do a two cc, a two cc, a two cc, a two cc dart and a One and a half cc dart. Boom. There's our drug right there. And then we'll add sterile water to level it out so it weighs, weighs the same as the practice starts we use. So this is our sterile water. We have to use another syringe. For that and another because we don't want to cross contaminate anything and there's your dart ready to rock and roll Good morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you did a good job. You did a good job. You gonna go? She's gonna go. If we move, like if I move one step, she'll go watch. <laughs> so this is normal procedure. We collapse the trap sorry, on these animals to get them immobilized and then we can get a, the drug in them safely and effectively. This video I can kind of go in depth on this buck. I got a lot of this capture um, work up on video. So first thing we do is we take temperature. We want to know if his temperature is high, low, and if it is, we need to get him immediately reversed and not worry about anything else. Just get him reversed, get him up, get him going. Here I am putting eye drops in this buck. I just want to make sure that he's able to wake up without dry eyes. So this is the collar that we use for the bucks. It stretches, so that way when they're in rut, it stretches out. When they start growing, it also stretches out. This is a two-year-old deer. It'll be on him until he's five years old. So they'll have these collars on for three, three years, and then they'll drop off.
All right, so I'm grabbing the biopsy punch out of its package here. I will be taking a small skin sample that will be used for genetic testing as well as disease testing. Then I'll take blood out of that same punch and then out of that same hole as well, I will clip his ear tag into there. We need to get blood now too. that your tag number? 480. 172. How's it Okay, good. He's 172, by the way. For chest? Yeah, uh, for my total length. Okay, so it's one. He's 101.9. This buck did a great job regulating his temperature, even in the cold weather. So we also take measurements. We take total body measurement as well as chest measurement and hoof measurement. Fourteen and a half. His lip injury here. He's got minor lip injury. Uh, nothing huge. So once in a while they'll get injured. So they have just minor little cuts. I mean, it's uh, nothing nice. huge, especially for a deer. Okay. They the basically the will get a couple we'll cuts above their the eyes button. or around their face okay. because they'll stick their face through the mesh of the trap trying to get out trying to escape and this buck just did that he just made a little tiny cut and he was bleeding a little bit from it that's why he had a little mouth and an injury okay so he needs two more cc's out of him now left hip is two cc's out of him well you put three cc's of out of him in his right hip yep and two cc's of out of him in his left hip and i gotta go get i got this no track sounds they can see me pull up just a little bit on the needle that's to basically test make sure that you don't get it in a vein you don't want it directly in a vein you don't want an iv you want it in a intermuscular or sub -Q. So you can see he had a little late reaction, you know, uh, he was a little slow on getting up and getting moving, but once he made it to the trees, he did norm what they normally do and run it, ran off.